you probably haven't noticed, but I'm a bit of a gamer. Yeah, yeah. I, I know, ladies, ladies, stop stacking up. Uh, the point is, uh, I keep apprised of various gaming news. And um, I'm also, uh, you know, I run a Discord server where there's some gaming discussion on a regular basis. Um, and also a bunch of arguments and conspiracy theories and anti-police stuff. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a mixed bag. The point is that uh, I get notified of a variety of things. And one of the things that was brought to my attention was um, that the DHS, the DH motherfucking S, is on board with trying to counter extremism in video games. Yeah. So, this is the, uh, the thing that, that was sent to me. Um, and I think that it relatively well speaks for itself. Uh, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security awarded a nearly $700,000 grant to researchers who specify in terrorism and security to study if and how gaming and extremism overlap, particularly for adolescents. Yeah. If 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 that sounds already like bullshit, you know, you're you're not wrong because that's fucking bullshit. And and it gets worse because when they said that the source was Vice, I uh I I I looked up the source. It's 100% real and um it also led me to a better source which is uh, this over here, which is big gaming companies get DHS help to keep players from becoming terrorists. Oh, man. The times we live in where uh, this is a headline that you get to read. Don't you love that this is something that's real? Yeah. So, let me just dive in here. Researchers target online gaming companies like Activision and Roblox. Notorious terrorist recruitment facilities. Activision and Roblox. And then you scroll down and it says, Last December, the UN warned of an overlooked but critical emerging terrorist threat. Extremist. Radicaling, radicalizing members of online gaming communities. Despite ample interest in saving gamers from such exploitation, experts say that a lack of research funding on the topic has put the gaming industry behind social networks when it comes to counter-terrorism efforts. That's starting to change, though. Within the past week, researchers told ours that the U.S. DHS has for the first time awarded funding nearly 700 grand to a research group working directly with major gaming companies to develop effective counterterrorism methods and protect vulnerable gamers <laughs> vulnerable gamers <laughs> Dude. <laughs> it's just so fucking funny to read that. It's like it's like they need to make gaming sound dangerous. Satanism didn't work. Fucking school shootings didn't work because most of the people who like play them don't do those. So they've just got to say yeah, your kids are going to become terrorists if they play too much Roblox. <laughs> you know, 
they they might they might become victims of pedophiles on Roblox, but they're not gonna become fucking terrorists. Um, you know, the pedophilia should be get, uh, investigated. You guys should do something about that. But you didn't, did you? You were just over here like, yeah, we gotta stop vulnerable gamers from being <laughs> terrorists. And it gets worse. Because it says, a project will span two years. It's spearheaded by Middlebury College's Institute of International Studies, which hosts the Center on Terrorism, Extremism, and Counterterrorism. Vice reported that other partners include a nonprofit called Take This, which focuses on gaming's impact on mental health, and a tech company called Logically, which Vice says works to solve the problem of bad online behavior at scale. Let that sink in. There is a whole ass company dedicated to controlling online behavior, and it's not just them either. But they're obvious about it. They're just obvious about it. They're just coming out with it and saying it. <laughs> We're controlling you. Give us fucking money, government. We'll help. We'll help. We'll help you control them. <laughs> um. So, seven hundred grand. <clears throat> the researchers have summarized their overarching goals for the DHS project as the development of a set of best practices and centralized resources for monitoring and evaluation of extremist activities, as well as a series of training workshops for the monitoring, detection, and prevention of extremist exploitation in gaming spaces. For community managers, multiplayer designers, lore de developers, mechanics designers, and trust and safety professionals. They want... The lore to be their control. They want to control the lore in video games to make sure that the game does not recruit terrorists. Oh man, it's just too fucking good, dude. I just, you, I, I, I think this is great parody. This is great satire. You know, but it's not, though. It's not great parody or satire. The U.S. government is paying a college and a few corporations to fucking monitor games and game development. Games! Imagine if that was books. Like, if they, if they were monitoring book development and making sure that your book didn't turn people into terrorists. Imagine if it was music development. Imagine if they tried to change the lore of your book or the uh, the words of your music because it would make people into terrorists. Holy shit. Imagine if $700,000 went to policing songs. Holy fucking shit. This is a bad precedent. Is it fucking not? Take this research di director, Rachel Cowart. Her name is Cowart. <laughs> Told ours that the primary objective of the project is to develop gaming industry focused resources. Her group's. <laughs> Cowart. Her group's ambitious plan is to reach out to big companies first then engage smaller companies and indie developers for maximum impact. Alex Newhouse, de Deputy Director at SeaTech, told ours that the project will start by targeting big gaming companies that essentially act like social platforms, including Roblox, Activision, Blizzard, and Bungie. Yeah, you know... When I think of ISIS recruiting grounds, I think Overwatch. You know? I want to be Tracer. I want to go bomb a public square. It's, 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 it's not, it's, it's beyond parody. You know? Yeah, yeah, I'm just, I just graduated directly from SWAT. 
to being a member of 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 a local white supremacist militia. We found each other through 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 uh, getting sick sick pones and doing lasso runs on reach. And and watch these these uh, companies, especially Activision and Bungie, they're already cucked to the state because. Bungie tries to appeal to the military so that they can get their marine audience and Activision tries to appeal to the military so that Call of Duty is better received. So they'll do it. They'll say yes, they'll hop on pop and figure out how best to, you know, but and this has been sort of hinted at for a while ever since no Russian everybody was like, "Oh, it's so gruesome." It's so gruesome what they're doing in this game. Look at what they did to this airport with all these not real people. Let's get very puritanical and very, very defensive and insular about it. Mm, something must be done. What about the children playing an M-rated game that we already said they shouldn't? Holy shit. And you know what else they're doing? They're... Borrowing social media terrorism, counterterrorism methods. Look at this. I want game developers, especially big ones like Roblox and Microsoft. Notice how they're just adding shit. Adding. To have dedicated counter extremism in games teams. In these days, we need to push this, uh, to push to be that sophisticated on the games industry side as well. <laughs> how how would you do that and what is this research going to be for are you going to sit in on gaming sessions are 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 these companies going to accept that that their gaming sessions are going to be automatically monitored by a government agency to help them snitch on players if that's the case dump them now find other companies that aren't doing this shit holy fucking shit this is fucking bad, yo. <laughs> so, <laughs> Newhouse plans to rely on experience helping giants like Google and Facebook organize counterterrorism teams. He says that SeaTac's biggest priority is convincing the gaming industry to invest in proactively moderating uh, extremist content by implementing increasingly sophisticated proactive detection and moderation systems that social networks also use. So the, the same people that have been deciding who gets banned and who does not, they're going to control your games now. And this is considered good. Maybe as somebody who has had the outlet they write for censored, been banned from uh, Reddit for bullshit that wasn't true, been banned from Discord for bullshit that wasn't true, been banned and then re, like, unsuspended from Twitter for shit that they even admitted wasn't true. Maybe. I think that this is all fucking bad and that if they're going to start moderating, like, fictional content in the same way, that's just a good way to get the Bureau of Morality discussed in places like... Fucking Nine Inch Nails is year zero. Or any number of dystopian futures. This is digital book burning on a government level. It's, it's gaming fascism. And I just thought people might want to know about it. You know, I feel like, I feel like people who are immediately going to trust the ADL are, are kind of full of shit. Especially since the ADL fucking backpedals, and and you, you want to know you want to know why I'm I'm so nervous about that. Well, it's because the ADL uh, literally is very well known for having spoken out and been very outspoken against the Ukrainian Nazi threat for years and years and years and years themselves and people who were quoting themselves they were all up ukraine's ass being like yeah you can't be nazis these people are nazis and that's bad and we're against nazis so we're saying it's bad and we're against it and now 
they're funding those Nazis. The U.S. government is funding those Nazis and taking the ADL who backtracked and said, well, you know, not all Nazis are bad. Come on, guys. That that ADL is now trying to say that there's an extremist threat in gaming. And and the DHS is listening to them and giving seven hundred thousand dollars so that tech companies can figure out how to mirror the sort of Orwellian censorship and monitoring that exists on places like Facebook and Google and put it here. Everywhere else, even in your leisure time, the government wants their stupid little fucking evil fingers in it. Even in your fiction, they want your control. And they're mad that they don't have it yet. I just thought I'd bring this up. Because one of the core tenets of fascism is controlling the culture. If they're going to start doing this now and controlling the lore and mechanics of video games. Don't be surprised when they start controlling every fucking thing else. Because it's never just one thing, and if you give a fucking government a cookie, they'll shoot your dog and your family. Anyway, game on, gamers, and smash the fucking state.